preamble. I came into work this morning and I was walking up the stairwell and this little tiny, turns out it's a gecko, jumped up on my boot. <laughs> and um, I was like, are you supposed to be here? And I just saw Dr. Cash, he's one of our biology, he was the chair of the biology department, he's one of the professors now. He said, yeah, there's a population that lives in one of our greenhouses. So I've got him in a cup here and I'm gonna take him out here and let him go so he can find his way back into the greenhouse, I hope. Uh, the greenhouse is, well, this is one of our greenhouses right here. So we'll let him go where he can find his way back in there. There he goes, I'm gonna let him go. Bye-bye guys. Good luck to you. Well, that's not something you get to do every day. <laughs> Never a dull moment is there. So I guess I'll get back to my normal Friday routine here. But happy vlogging, Eve. set to go. Um, I've got my knitting projects and my pillow and I'm dressed as comfortably as I can. Um, we're not staying overnight. We're going down to Dallas, which is about a six hour drive. We're going to see the show and we're going to come back. Um, my friend Zane is driving and they want to come back tonight. So I'm fine with that. Oh, Simon has got to speak here. Hi, Simon. Hello. But um, anyway, so I'm all set and ready. Uh, I'm wearing a, a tank top with a, a kimono style jacket over it. Um, I figured that would be nice and cool uh, for being inside the venue. Um, and jeans and boots. You know, the last time I was at the bomb factory, this place is called the factory now, but it used to be called the bomb factory. I saw the cult there in about 1994 or 5, 1995. Uh, it was pretty, that was a rough concert because that was back in the day of the mosh pit. I'm too old for that. <laughs> I'm too old for that now. So, um, but anyway, I'm looking forward to seeing High Lung. They put on, they sh they're supposed to put on an amazing show and I love their music. So, should be a good time. Oh, and I forgot to say it's Saturday, October the 1st. <laughs> Well, we're almost there. We're in, is this McKinney, Texas? Yep. McKinney, Texas. Hi. Hi, Zane says hi. <laughs> Knitting, almost there. Doors open at 6.30, show starts at eight. Yay! know you're at the right place when there's a huge ass line of people wearing black t-shirts you know you're in the right line <laughs>
got in, I got into my house this morning at 5.45 and I took about, a, I guess it's about 10 o'clock. So I took about a four hour, well, by the time I got to sleep, it was about a three hour nap because I had to get everybody settled back down and organized. Um, so they, uh, I'm gonna try to stay up and get to bed at a regular time um, tonight or today, whatever it is, I'm so confused. Uh, but I did get quite a bit of knitting done on my sweater uh, since Zane drove. And yes, I can knit on this sweater in the dark. Of course, it wasn't completely dark in the car because they were listening to podcasts and um, so their light from their radio uh, screen, their media screen gave me enough light to knit. So, um, yeah, so the, where I was at when I last showed this to y'all was right here. So I got all this done yesterday in the car. <laughs> so um, this is the Saturday, the Saturday morning sweater um, by Tristan from Dragonhorn Yarns. And it's a, meant to be like a color block sweater. So I'm going to knit up. I've got this much of this ball of orange left. I'm going to knit that up on the body. Then I've got some of the orange, yellow left. So I'm going to knit another ball of yellow and see where that gets me. And then I'm going to go to the sleeves and knit the stripe of orange on the sleeves the same length as the stripe of orange on the body. Then switch back to the yellow and finish out the sleeves in the yellow. Because I want to use as much of this as I can. And this is meant to be a really oversized um, comfy sweater. I did the short row option so that the the neck is a little bit scooped, but it's meant to be like a snuggy, snuggy, snuggly sweater. I did get that done. I also got my um, October um, Halloween sock along for Kirsty at Grenade Creations podcast. I got my socks cast on, but they're still in the other room. So I'll show you guys those later. So anyway, I will check back in a little bit. Well, Satchel's enjoying that basket. He's all folded up inside of it. He's a good boy. Yeah, he's a good boy. Okay, so I think I'm going to wrap up this two or three days of Vlogoween here. Um, I thought I'd tell you just a little bit about High Lung. Um, they are the band, the band that I saw Saturday night, and they are uh, considered an experimental folk music band, and they've got members from Denmark, Norway, Germany. And they... Um, base a lot of their music on ancient texts and runic inscriptions, particularly from the Germanic people of the Bronze Age, Iron Age, and Viking Age. Um, the, they're kind of their catchphrase is their amplified history. Uh, so it's not meant to be a particular historical representation or religious representation, but it's meant to translate into, you know, into us thinking about, I think, today's world, in my opinion. Um, but anyway, the word Heilung is a German word for healing, and they, they talk a, a lot in a lot of their interviews and a lot of their stuff about healing the earth and, um, you know, that we are all part of the same group. We are all the human race and how we need to learn to, um, Love, love the others, so to speak. Love the other, which is something we've talked about a lot on this podcast. And someone was talking to me about how can you hate people so much? How can people hate so much? And I said, because they they are have been taught by the powers that be in many cases to be fearful of the other by casting the other as someone who's trying to steal from you or harm you or destroy your way of life. I don't know how we fix that, but that is problems for smarter minds than me. Um, but anyway, I wanted to tell you a little bit about them. They have about they have several albums. You can go listen to them on um, on YouTube or, or wherever. Uh, they are not for everybody. They and they treat their performances as a ritual. They open it as a ritual. They it, and they close it. There's no encore. There's no opening act. It is a very amazing experience to get to stand in that room with hundreds upon hundreds of people and yet still feel like you're connecting with this group 
Um, anyway, I'm very thankful that I had the opportunity to go. So what I thought I would do is, it was pretty popular when I looked at some of my Oracle decks um, over Vlogist. So what I thought I would do is I have the Goddess Tarot. I've had it for a long time, probably 30, 25 years, 30 years. I bought the book initially. There's a children's book uh, about different cultural goddesses. And then there was a tarot deck that came out with it. So I bought the tarot deck. And then sometime later, somebody gave me a box of books. And this workbook was in there. So what I thought I would do, uh, it's a traditional tarot deck, meaning that it's got the major arcana and it's got the suit cards. The major arcana, though, are different goddesses from different cultures. And I think it would be useful to... Um, for me to learn about them. So I thought I would share that experience with you. So I'm going to do a couple here today. The first one is the representative of the full card, and this is called Beginnings, and it's Tara. And uh, it says, affiliated with Beginnings is the compassionate mother goddess Tara, who is perhaps the most important deity in Tibetan Buddha, to Tibetan Buddhists. Endowed with the power to heal all sorrows and grant all wishes, she is honored as the protectress against the fears that block men and women from living in harmony. Stories about Tara reveal the worries that concern the people of ancient Tibet. For example, she is reputed to protect her followers from the fear of elephants and snakes. The most dangerous fears are often insidiously masked. These are the ones that can wreak the most damage to our self-confidence and peace of mind, uh, keeping us from living ha as happily as we would like. Often our fears will emerge as we begin a new phase of life, prom a promising relationship, a new venture, a change of home or job. It is, if it, is, it, it, it is as if our desire for this change has given birth to an equally violent reaction which will not allow us to grow. The appearance of this card is an invitation for us to consider the functions of these fears performed for us. Understanding them can be the first step toward releasing them. And the way this book works is there's a workbook that goes with it. I'm not going to work out the workbook uh, yet, but I wanted to share that. Then the next one is uh, Isis, and, and Isis is, um, the traditional card is the magician, and this is called magic. Um, so the great Egyptian fertility goddess Isis, affiliated with magic, is a potent symbol of the alchemical transformation. For over 3,000 years, from before 3000 BC to the 2nd century AD, Isis was worshipped in Egypt as the great mother goddess of the universe. She was the sole possessor of the secret name of Ra, the Egyptian ruling god, which gave her unlimited magical powers. Using these powers, as well as the strength of her love, Isis was able to bring Osiris, her husband and brother, back to life for a short time after he was murdered. Horus, the child she conceived of him during this interlude, grew to become one of the most powerful Egyptian gods. This card suggests a growing awareness of the magic within yourself, as well as a new yearning to grow beyond any limitations. You are able to transform your life through the strength of your originality and power. All you need to do is take possession of what you desire, much as Isis possessed the secret name of Ra. Um, and this is an older book, so some of the language is not gender inclusive. Unfortunately, I don't know if it's been, yeah, this is published in 2000, so this book is two, 22 years old. Um, I don't know if it's been republished, but um, anyway, so these are the two cards for today, Tara and Isis. So the artwork is beautiful on these, I think. So I'll be sharing those with you uh, as we do this. I'm probably going to, only going to record, like, put an episode out every three days or so because um, some people said they didn't want to see Vlogoween and some people did, and more people said they did than they didn't, so I'm doing it. Yay! <laughs> I should never ask for opinions if I don't want to hear them, right? That's the thing. Um, but at any rate, so I am going to call it a good here, and I will check in with y'all in a few days. So, bye. Mm -hmm.